Okay, so this is a cat branded uh, China uh, LED headlamp uh, that I got for Christmas. Uh, and uh, this is a rather nice thing. Uh, it's pretty standard as far as these uh, LED China lamps go. It's got uh, two protected L1850 cells in parallel, uh, 2200 mAh hour rated, uh, USB charger in built in. Uh, pretty nice as far as uh, these headlamps go. However, it has an issue, and that is that it has a lens that's out of focus. There we go. So this lens is nice for them to advertise that it get, reaches 300 meters, but when you actually wear this thing and you work at stuff at a reasonably close distance, it really is uh, rather limiting in angle. That's uh, the widest zoom you can get out of it, and, and it barely covers my rather shallow 18 uh, millimeter lens. And if we just uh, take that lens off, we get a much, much wider field of view with a soft light, and that's exactly what I want. And uh, you could just leave the lens off, but that leaves our LED die exposed there, and I don't want that because this is going to get wet and it's going to get dirt and it's going to get banged around. So I want to have this module installed with something to protect the LED itself. And I figured, what materials do we have around the house that's going to make a decent, durable plastic protective lens? And the answer is, of course, old crappy driver DVDs, or rather driver CDs, that you get with whatever old stuff you have. So this is the driver CD from my monitor from 2007, rather useless. It has nothing useful in it at all. Any ICC profiles on this thing uh, are outdated since the monitor has been running for 20,000 hours. And I thought if we just scratch carefully away at this uh, top layer, we should end up with a clear piece of plastic, uh, which is just for backing for the CD. And then we can just cut that to size, sand it down a bit, and install it into our frame. So the original lens is just held in with a ring clip there. So it should be rather easy to get out. We just pry it out and install a new one and use the original to size the hole we want to cut on the CD. So let's just give that a go and see how it pans out. Okay, so the original lens came out rather nicely. I just used a razor blade to flip that out, and now we have our lens released. So now it should just be a question of not having any pens. Pens are quiet. So uh, now I think we're just going to cut out a rough size of this lens. Well, that pen is garbage. Something like that. Uh, and then we'll start peeling the label. I'm just going to use some tin snips. I think this is going to work. I have no idea. That's making nice crunching sort of noises. And that's a piece of CD. Hmm, have we caused irreparable damage there? No, we still have enough to work with. To make our lens, uh, we can just mark that out and uh, try and make an effort to cut it, or maybe just sand this down, really, so that uh, we don't end up cracking the CD, because we really don't want that, because that's why wow, this pen is garbage. Because if we have cracks, that's just going to allow dirt and moisture to get into our light, and that's what we're trying to prevent. So. I think I'm going to take this to the uh, uh, wheel grinder and just carefully grind away all of the excess plastic and uh, uh, then we'll see uh, if it survives, basically. And uh, but, uh, before we get that far, though, let's just take a knife blade to this and see if we can scratch away at this labelling. So the purple's coming off nicely. We have achieved some transparency, so I'm just going to uh, peel away of this and uh, grind it to a circle, and uh, then we'll see if it survives. Well, okay, that took about uh, five minutes of rather intensive uh, 
scraping, but we do have a somewhat translucent piece of plastic. Now it's a bit scratched up, I don't quite care, bit of a uh, CD surface left. Uh, I just wanted to know if it's uh, at all possible to really scratch this off, and it seems doable. So now I'm going to go and uh, try and grind this down and see if it actually survives that. And uh, once that's done, I'll uh, just uh, scratch off the last stuff and maybe very gently sand the surface down to get rid of the worst final pieces. We don't really care about uh, if it uh, becomes uh, a bit matte because we, we want a wide dispersion of the light anyway. This, it's not going to be hugely detrimental to the amount of light we get into the light and these lights have such crazy light, uh, light output anyway, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so here is our rough sketch of a lens and sand of that day went very much better than I dared expect. So we really just need to clean up the edges a bit. It's going to take a bit of hand sanding still to get to quite conform to the shape of our light lens holder if thing since yeah, my my sanding thing, thing and jig is not uh, of the highest quality, so it's a bit rough doing the precision work on a bloody piece of plastic. But uh, we really are getting rather close. It's there's not a lot left to get for some there. I'm just going to finish this up with a hand file, and uh, yeah, not looking too bad. Are we almost there? Just a little more filing, ever so careful filing, and this is going to fit like a glove. And that's installed. Alright, and I think just a little bit of a two facing grit wet sanding is going to be the final bit we need to get rid of the final uh, 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 disky bits of this CD and finally turn it back into a piece of plastic. Very, very careful sanding. We don't want to make it completely matte and useless. I think that might be last of the data cleared off this drive. Not even the NSA can recover this, I don't think. Okay, so that just leaves us with a final installation, which uh, should be uh, quite a breeze because uh, the thickness of the CD is almost a perfect match to the thickness of this, you know, the base of this lens. And we even have a rubber gasket today in here, uh, even though it's gotten completely uh, glitter bombed. Uh, it's uh, there and it's going to give us a bit of slop in our assembly. So let's just poke this in and see if we can get our clip to go back in. I think this is going to work just fine. Although these clips are devil's spawn. Snap. Oh, that's in there. So it's a bit milky. You you can see through it, but uh, it's not perfectly clear. But I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. And since we're looking for a wide light pattern anyway, a bit of uh, frosting isn't going to be that big of a deal. So let's see. Yeah, what we have. So this is uh, the focusing thing is uh, as far back as it goes. So if we put the original lens on there, it's, uh, it gives us about that, roughly. You can see what that looks like with my fingers on the side, of course, but it's not very wide. So let's install our frosted lens. And it does provide a much a wider light and it makes it quite soft. You can see the shadow of my hand there. It's a... Uh, oh, you can see my bloody face. That's no good. You can see my shad the shadow of my hand is actually somewhat 
soft uh, as compared to the raw LED, which uh, has a very sharp shadow. Well, it's actually somewhat soft. But I do think this is a pretty decent solution to the problem. We still have a waterproof light. We lose the focusing feature since obviously there's no lens. This just gets rid of a bunch of the light. But uh, we do have a wide dispersion light. It goes right up against the little edges on the assembly vac. I don't mind this at all. What happens if we just slide the original lens on top of this? Yeah, he does that. Ha! Huh. I don't get why they put these lenses on these. Because this is a such, so, so much more useful of a light. If I put this on my head and look around, this shines perfectly down where I want to see and it covers my entire field of vision. Whereas the uh, previous light have tunnel sight right around there. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.